making moves. And that's kind of, you know, kind of my thing, kind of what I'm talking about, making moves, right? So, I mean, first of all, I made my first step into, you know, bringing in a little bit of hierarchy and I set, I moved Frenchie up. He's a YG now, young gangster, but I ain't really told nobody yet. I was saying, you ain't even told me that. No, exactly. I moved him up. I just want to see how he acts and how he reacts to that. And see, uh, also, I want to see if motherfuckers listen to him and respect him as somebody to listen to, you know? Yeah. No, I, I feel that. Yeah, because him being around a lot has really shown oh, me really, how much yeah. we miss when he's not around, right? I agree. I agree. Listen, that's why he's my henchman number one. That is why he's henchman number one. And I guess uh -huh, he's mine, that uh -huh. henchman number one now, too. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. shit, first promotion, you know? Yeah. The big move. Big move. I think I the only other motherfucker that... Yeah, I think the only other motherfucker that's anywhere near that is probably Breezy. Yeah. I think uh, Breezy in a different way, right? He's just somebody that, again, like I said about Frenchie, right? He's somebody that motherfuckers will listen to if he speaks. He just don't really speak that much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but Frenchie's very much so he'll he'll listen to y'all and like, he'll get information from that shit. Yes. He keeps on bringing me shit. He's been, it's been a real asset having that motherfucker back around so much. But yeah, shit. I mean, you got any questions? Shit. I mean, not that I can think of. All right, shit. But yeah, with with bag selling for 91 bucks per now, obviously, like yeah. I said to the boys, new price i think literally just split it straight down the middle like i have done is definitely i think the play right yeah as long as you care yeah exactly my fuckers seem fine with it like completely fine with it so i got it was a 24 dollar increase to how much it sells for so i just split it straight down the middle we are we selling bags for 12 dollars more now 32 dollars a bag and then that means that the pushes make 12 dollars more and the set fund makes 12 dollars more I've let yeah. Simon know that we're doing that, and I've told him to make sure that his set is charging the prospects 32 a bag as well, so that the price is the same. So that we don't get a situation where prospects go, I can get it cheaper from the east side, so I'm never going to buy from the yeah, keto tray. Yeah, yeah, we can't have that happen. Exactly. So as long See, as the east side is selling them at the same price to the prospects as we are, then it's going to be fine. And that just means more money for the east side, so I don't see them having a problem with that. I told you about this fudge situation, right? And the uh, Black Lotus disbanding. Yeah. It's just got my bit. brain spinning. I got so many ideas right now. So many fucking ideas of how shit could go. I mean, what you thinking? I mean, the, the, the easiest option, right, is fuck it off and just, you know, stay true mash and everybody stay together. Everything's working perfectly as it is, right? Yeah. Other option, the east side is, uh, you know, I've been talking to Jerome, Simon a bit. We've been talking about shit. Jerome, uh, and just to preface this, like, Jerome made it very clear that he very much wants us to, as a whole, stay together and stay doing what we're doing right now. He agrees that everything is going very well right now. They want, they do want to swap with the Black Lotus and swap to Fudge because they, they fuck with that spot more. They fuck with where it's at. Like, it's really close to the south side and generally the rest of the city. We think it's more like, you know, it's... You know, they, they don't really fuck with, oh, we the beach side ballers type shit, you know? They don't yeah. really fuck with that. But obviously, for me, that really doesn't matter to me. Because, I mean, shit, talking about, oh, it's really close to the city. I mean, fuck, we all got supercars, dog. You can be in the city for in two real. seconds yeah, from two really minutes, right? Matter. So, yeah. for me, that's not really a reason. And the, I guess the, it's more gangster, it's kind of valid. But equally, like, I really fuck with two masks, personally. We don't really get no trouble from cops. We very rarely get rolled up on from motherfuckers robbing us. Like, yeah, it happens, but, like, it doesn't happen, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I fuck with two masks. And obviously, all of our people have fucked with two masks from the start. I've got long-term plans. The Raiders next door, you know, right here, you know, this is where they hold. And these motherfuckers seem cool. They want to do business together and whatever. So I personally fuck with two masks. Now... That's the point where I'm like, okay. So for me, I don't really see that as something I'm going to do. So I'm out here cooking, right? I'm thinking, okay, well, how can I make this shit interesting? How come there's, th like, there's, there's got to be an opportunity in this shit, right? And that's when I started cooking. And oh my God, I got fucking ideas. Hear me out, because this shit's yeah, going to sound listening. batshit crazy and insane, okay? Okay. I'm and listening. understand that I know that. I know it sounds insane. I don't really give a fuck. Listen to me so far. I mean, shit, I came out of here, back over here, 
from Vice, fake fucking ID, talking about, I'm going to start a gang while I was working at fucking Senya Buns. A motherfucker laughing in my Absolutely face. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely laughing straight in my face. And now we're making $2 million a week. Talk about criminal organization. And that's just off of the one thing that we do. Yep. Literally off of one thing we do, we make $2 million a week. So I don't know who the fuck going on who's questioning me now. Who's questioning me now? Anyway, new, insane, delusional idea, right? So I've been talking to this guy, Z, from the Black Lotus. I fuck with his vibe. He's got a good attitude. I let him know I already, you know, I'm like the, I'm like the disband whisperer. You know, obviously these motherfucking East Side guys were disbanded. And after I yeah, got done with yeah. it, now we are, you know, we are where we are, right? Yep. So, end of the day, I think if there's anybody that can pull off the shit I'm about to say, it's us, right? So, the idea is, Kilo trade bodies, East Side bodies, right? Mm -hmm. We're two sets, one gang right now. Now, listen. Budge Lane, Chumash, two separate toughs. Hear me out. The East Side Ballers want to go Chumash. The Kilo Trey Ballers want to stay, sorry, opposite. The you East Side opposite. Ballers want to go Budge. The Kilo Trey Ballers want to stay Chumash. Now, hear me out. East Side Ballers, Kilo Trey Ballers become separate gangs again, right? Now, what does that mean day to day? That literally just means the East Side Ballers ain't fighting no war for Kilo Trey Ballers. Outside of that, shit stays the same. We can work together as much as any other gang can work together, right? We can go on drives together. We can fuck with each other, all that shit, right? No. Now, hear me out. These Black Lotus remnants, these motherfuckers that are disbanded, right? We talk to them. We hear them out. We like to see what they, see what the vibe is and see if the play is that the East Side Ballers, we, we kind of offer them is a, is a strange word because it's like giving them ownership. It's not, so it's not offer them, but basically make them to offer that the East Side Ballers come over to Fudge so they get the powerhouse that is the East Side Ballers holding Fudge, which means they ain't going to be fucked with straight up. And they can keep as many people as around there that they, you know, they want to keep on Fudge. And then other motherfuckers from their set come over to Chumash and then they still got a top spot to push on. Now hear me out. This is where it gets crazy. If it is kind of a half and half type thing, this is the thing. I don't really know how many there are of them and how many are left of them, right? So that kind of changes how this could go. But let's say, let's say hypothetically, there's like at least 15 of them or some shit, right? Maybe they have, maybe they have like seven and stay on fudge and have the east side shit over there. And then you got the other, other seven, maybe eight or whatever, come over to two mash. And then motherfuckers come over there. We out here, you know, that's pretty much two full apps again, right? Now, this is where it gets shit insane old mode, right? This is where I say, how about we run this shit the same way that we're running it right now. Two sets, one gang, right? But two gangs, four sets. But even crazier, one gang, two gangs, four sets. Okay. One gang, two gangs, four sets. That's it. Crazy. Insane no mode, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do I mean by that? Right? What do I mean by that? I mean one gang, the ballers. And I mean two separately operating gangs, the West Coast ballers and the Fudge Lane ballers. The Fudge Lane ballers being the East Side ballers and whatever the fuck the other set could be on Fudge Lane, right? And then on Chumas, the Kilo Trey Ballers and whoever the fuck else, right? Yeah. So, I don't know, fucking an example, right? So this guy, Z, that I've been talking to from, uh, from the Black Lotus Remnants. So let's say he wants to stay on Fudge and have his own set, right? So that could be the 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 ZB set, the Z Ballers. Okay. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? It could be the ZB. ZB. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, that could be the, the Z ballers. What, what do you think? That could be on Fudge Lane. What do you think about that? I mean, we about to think of a, a different set name if that's going to be it. Well, why you say that? Anyway, yeah. So hypothetically, <laughs> it could be that, right? Or maybe not. But yeah, so but that's what I'm saying, right? I have it be my fucking grow into what would become an absolute fucking powerhouse throughout the entire city where it basically is... Four sets of ballers, which could mean like 50 plus people, right? Yeah. 
Making that shit work, I'm under no illusions. A holy fuck, that would be the most crazy oh, shit ever, right? Yeah. But would it? I've been sat here, I've been thinking. Yeah, it's crazy when I say it out loud, right? Because it's not been done ever before, right? But yeah. if you don't try crazy shit, you never get crazy results, right? Now, hear me out. The way this obviously works means that, I mean, my, my main time would be spent on the keto tray barless and making sure that yeah. shit's working out. And then the West Coast barless and making that shit, you know, I'll be, I'll be heading up that. And then I take like a, I take a role where ov the overall gang, I probably, you know, call meetings between like all the leaders every week and just see what's going on. You know, make sure everybody doing all right, see what the problems are, see what the good things are and whatever. So, you know, have me kind of head those sort of meetings and shit. But then have it be basically, you know, we got the OGs of each set all coming together and making sure shit's smooth. And uh, if there's any problems to iron out or if there's anything that they got ideas wise of shit that could be cucked up for the entire gang, that shit could be fire. I think that shit could actually work. It would just need yeah, like some really good work. leaders in each set to come together. And as long as they are on the same page with each other, then everything falls into place. Yeah, exactly. It would, yeah, it would definitely have to have, you know, strong leaders you know to hold that shit you know keep it under under wraps you know exactly and basically it mean like i mean let me give you an example right so like i said me head up the keto tray as it happened and then for example i have my fucker like uh, jerome in the east side set my fuckers luck to jerome a lot right or at least he's at least he's a he's a loud motherfucker like he'll say his shit yeah. and motherfuckers will listen right if he's got some thought whether it's negative or positive you're gonna hear it and that's a good thing from a leader. Because that's a motherfucker that's not afraid to speak his mind and let motherfuckers know, you know? That's it's either sure. that or maybe if Peter's got enough time, then I guess Peter could be that for them. I don't know. But that, that sort of thing where it's like, you know, I have a meeting. It's me, Jerome, you from the Kilo Trey set. So obviously me as the ballers, you as Kilo Trey. Jerome is east side. This guy Z as whoever sticks with him. And then some other motherfucker from the people that end up on two mass with us or whatever. Yeah. All get together and we'll be like, yo, this is how much we're making, all this sort of shit. Could be fire. I can't lie. Can it's I gotta like figure out a way stuff, to pitch you know? this without it being so uh, confusing. I mean, it makes sense. Like, it's just like four groups of people that are under like one name, but all separate in a way. Yeah. I mean, two Basically, sides are, you know, separate together, as yeah. in, like, give them the freedom to do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, yeah. Literally, like, this was the shit. vision originally for the Kilo Trey Ballers. Just yeah. build up a group of leaders. That's why we got motherfuckers in our gang, like, I mean, shit, like, Frenchie and Breezy could easily just, like, build up their own crews of people to do shit, right? Breezy's yeah. less gangster, but he'd easily make a whole high school of himself or a boost crew or whatever. I think Frenchie would be able to make a gang of his own, and he he do I. Yeah. I mean, you do I. Obviously, this is why this is what I mean. So I I see this as a possibility to make the vision that I really like the completely delusional, insane vision that I had in the first place for this shit. I mean, I could I could see it work. I mean, it's just you know you think of it like the you know how the police force runs, you know, too. If you think of like the BCSO versus you know PD, it's like the same shit. You know, they're one, you know, united kind of police force, but they got their own shit on each side. Just sure. Yeah, that, they're united. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, sure. they don't have any united beef with each other. Equal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, if we're going to have four sets of people, there's going to be internal beef somewhere. Oh, 100 percent. But this is the thing, so, right? There's always going to be that, even in big groups anyway. We could recruit oh, exactly. motherfuckers that don't exactly. want to push weed right now, right? And they won't fuck with because there's already 28 of us, right? Or 29. Yep. And there's, like there's already going to be motherfuckers that don't fuck with each other, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, as long as motherfuckers can put it aside and be like, yo, look, listen, gang is gang. And if I don't like a motherfucker, I just don't need to talk to them. Yeah. I don't need to cause problems. And if they do cause problems, then we get that shit squared up. Literally just have them fight each other. Fist fights. Like that boxing shit that you were talking to me about. Yeah. And the Vagos can watch. <laughs> the Vagos can watch, yeah. We'll get them like the cuck chair. Have a whole ass ring. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Exactly. But yeah, it would just mean like, I mean, selfishly for me, it would take a lot of fucking weight. I mean, nah, it would both be like the biggest headache I would ever have in my fucking life. But it would also mean like I would know 
who is directly gonna like who do i directly need to look after on a day-to-day -day basis yeah whereas right now i'm like i gotta think about 28 people all at once all the time now would i have to think about 50 plus people yes i absolutely would and that'd be fine but equally i would have other people where i've basically given the ownership and the freedom to deal with that shit you know yeah i mean really and and really if we're gonna be having like that much you really shouldn't be have to looking after each set that's what those meetings are for nah yeah you, you right. get together they talk about some things maybe we pop out some ideas a fix said problem and then and then that person takes care of said problem you know Nah, exactly yeah you see it you see the vision yeah i, I honestly I, I could see it it working or it happening who the fuck knows i mean yeah i mean i, I could pitch it to z that way yeah i might pitch it to z in the black lotus and they go nah get fucked legitimately because they could be like uh yeah you're not taking fudge uh yeah fuck off oh yeah nah i mean straight up if we ask them for any control of the fudge turf as well as keeping our two mass turf like that's not gonna fly like it would need to be a case yeah. of they keep control of fudge but then motherfuckers go over there to push, right? Yeah. So turf-wise, that's how that would work, right? But then also it would mean that the people over there would be able to, like, buy houses and whatever. So we would have a foothold and a part of control on that turf in that sense, right? Yeah. We ain't sure how many houses they got on Fudge, right? So if they got more than one, then they could sell us the one that's not got the satellite in. So then, you know... That gives us the foothold there and, you know, motherfuckers be able to wake up there and do their thing, operate out of there. And then on, on, on the, when it comes to actually controlling the app, yeah, who gives a fuck? As long as they like do what they need to do to make sure that motherfuckers are on there that want to push, then outside of that, the app really don't matter for anything else. So who gives a yeah. fuck? Will the ESA see it that way? Probably not, but. Probably not. They, they, they could be, they could be talked into it. Yeah, yeah, they could be talked into it. I mean, they don't have any control right now because, I mean, it is the way it is. But, I mean, at the same time, it's like, it's literally just me doing that shit. Yeah, it's just But it you. needs... To, but this is the thing. That sort of shit is shit that needs to be kept like that. Because if you've got 15 motherfuckers that can all... check Straight up, if you can get on that PC, you don't even need to be on the hideout to be able to change everything about the hideout. Yep. And that's the sort of shit that needs to be kept completely to a minimum of however many people have access to that otherwise it immediately becomes a complete butt fuck of who changed this who did this and everybody's like it was him you know what i mean yep less hands in the pot makes it easier no nah, exactly exactly like even me breezy and isa i'll just let isa know never do anything unless he asks me and i say yes i'll let breezy yeah. know pretty much the same shit too i've got a little bit more trust in breezy obviously because breezy being in the gang like fully and bloody member yeah. but you know and I trust Issa, but, you know, I trust Issa as, but do I trust Issa with literally the main gang asset as a prospect and as one of my, one of my people's girl? Like, that, that would be stupid of me to put that risk in. And it, it, like, the way it is right now is kind of dumb, but there was no other option, right? There was no other option, yeah. Exactly. And I got so, I'm in debt to Issa for letting us do that, for real. Like, yeah. she's, a, she's a real one. And she gets proven every single day by not fucking around with it that she's extremely trustworthy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, interesting, interesting. But, yeah, that's the, that's the sort of shit that my mind's kind of on right now. And this is some sort of crazy fucking... I feel like a crazy scientist cooking up, like, the chemistry of the next fucking evolution of the ballers. Because right now, Jerome, Jerome even turned around and he said that right now, this is probably the strongest the ballers have been full stop. Yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah, and that was like, that was love to be able to hear that shit, you know? He was, you know, talking so much about, you know, I want us all to stick together. I'm really enjoying this shit. This shit's fire. It was real good to hear. It was good to hear because obviously, you know, there's a little bit of me that's like, well, I mean, fuck, I think, I think we, be I think the Kilo Trey are benefiting, benefiting more from this merger than the East Side to an extent. Yeah. But we both fill in gaps that each set has, right? So it's exactly, literally exactly. kind of perfect. Pick up for, you know, one's, you know, lack of, you know, skill in said area. No, exactly. You got motherfuckers on the Kilo Trey set that's out here real good at, you know, articulating, coming down to, you know, thinking of ideas for next shit. What else can we do? How else can we make money? Business shit. You know, getting connections throughout the whole city type shit. And then you got the Eastside motherfuckers out here, you know, they make their money. They make crazy amounts of it. They rake it the fuck in. You ask them to do some shit. They get it done. A motherfucker tries press. Good fucking luck handling the east side. You know how big. 
Yep. It's kind of fire how it's looking right now. And obviously, this is the thing, right? With this, with the crazy idea I got, if we can talk motherfuckers into trying this shit, right? Worst case scenario is it doesn't work out and us and the east side just join back up the same way we are right now. Exactly. Literally, worst case scenario is we just revert to how we are right now. And we lose nothing. nothing. Literally lose nothing. Gain? Yeah, literally it won't. Lose it really nothing, won't maybe anything. even gain out of it. Exactly. We gain, you know, gain connections, gain notoriety, gain maybe you, if the East Side were to buy the house fudge, then you know they'd have a new house on fudge, like another place to operate out of. That wouldn't go away if this shit didn't work. Yeah. At the end of the day, you don't even know what you know the Black Lotus disband disbanded motherfuckers were even gonna do. Yeah, they might even just completely retire. Yeah, they might retire. They might want to not be in a gang anymore. They might keep Black Lotus going. Maybe a different leader. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? And that's why I'm trying to have this conversation with them. But they, you know, they yeah. understandably, they need to keep having talks internally to make sure that they are all on the same page. Yeah. I mean, at Obviously. the end of the day, they got to fuck with us, too. You know, if, oh, if 100%. we're going to make it work, they got to fuck with us. No, oh, 100%. Absolutely. And I think the way around it, obviously, is they don't really have to do that much. If I think the real sell to this idea is just straight up. I can come to motherfuckers with numbers, just straight numbers and be like, look, listen, we have currently gotten our business down to a T where we can sell 15 fucking thousand bags per set each. And that brings in, hold on. I did the new maths with the $91. Oh it's fucking crazy. With the $91, each set on the each set is bringing in $1,365,000 per week if they sell 15,000 bags. Damn. Okay. At a two, at a overall, two million three hundred and forty fifty six thousand four hundred and fifty six thousand dollars profit. That's after buying the weed. Two point three mil. Okay. Okay. Every week. So yeah, it's just that's when I put that shit on the table and I'm be like, yo, look, motherfuckers, if you want a piece of this pie, you want a piece of how we can run this shit, then we can run this shit. And obviously, that then if we if for example, it was the four sets. That shit doubles, right? So we'd be looking at like 4.6, maybe no, $4.7 million profit a week. Yeah. And shit's fucking insane. And that would mean overall, that would mean, and this is where the one gang comes into it, right? Because it's like, you know, two gangs separated in turfs in terms of like who holds down turfs, right? So turf wise, completely separated into two gangs. Now, overall, be able to get shit going, like get a warehouse for the whole gang to use for like gardening or whatever or anything else like that. You know, money washing, bring that all into one spot, make sure that shit's handled and make it real easy for everybody. The same shit that I got over at the house right now, make it so fucking easy for people to get all their shit washed that they, nobody even needs to think. Yeah. Like that sort of shit is what could be the main sell is just make it like, I mean, my thing is I need to figure out from Black Lotus, why they disbanded, like what went wrong and then offer them a reason for it to be like, okay, if we fuck with these guys, these guys are going to fix our problems. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how we do this shit. Gotta make a, a, a sweet offer. You know, that would make sense for them. No, exactly. Exactly. And that's where, you know, coming into, you know, organizing the whole literally $1.3 million for a set every week. If you put in like the bare minimum work, then man, fuck, that's a uh, hundred percent. That's going to be music to their ears, I think. And like I say, when it comes down to the, how us and the Kilo trade work, maybe, you know, maybe Black Lotus has got a similar group like that. Who knows? Maybe yeah. they got people that's more one side and more the other. And then we just slot them in where they fit. Right. Yeah, be I, like, say, I don't know they, how yeah. anything about Black Lotus. To be honest. Not me neither and that's where that's where this shit is like a complete fucking shot in the dark but yeah i mean shit that's the sort of shit i'm thinking about right now that's what i'm cooking up what do you think i mean I, like i said i could see it i could see the, i could see it and i could see it you know both ways working not working to delulu you know it, it's a crazy idea but you know sometimes crazy ideas work sometimes for real work. Sometimes i've they been don't out work. here you know I'm delusional, but you know, I just aim to make my delusions a reality and to see where what where the middle ground is. 
listen, I mean, we've made some delusions a reality too. I mean, we got that one point, however, two million dollar house in like a week. So yeah, that shit was crazy. We have like nothing, you know, started like from basically nothing to having it. 